Okay, hey everybody, welcome to the Chew Stream. Everybody can hear me now, everything's working well. Last week we had some difficulties with the internet. <sighs> you know, sometimes these things happen, but you know what? You gotta remember that when bad things happen and you're trying your hardest and using your common sense, hey, sometimes that just means great things are on their way. And that is one of the truest statements I've ever adopted you know one of the truest kind of um, philosophies that I've adopted and it's totally true because after last week's stream we hit our third or our second stretch goal in our Kickstarter which was awesome because that stretch goal on our Kickstarter is going to be able to lower the prices of all of the uh, subscriptions when we go into the full version of um, you know the subscriptions on schoolism so there's plenty of great rewards still available definitely check it out because right now it looks like maybe we'll hit the third um, the third reward and the third stretch sorry the third stretch goal and the third stretch goal is going to bring down the subscriptions from fifteen dollars a month to twelve dollars a month okay right now uh, because we hit the new stretch goal it's going to be at fifteen dollars a month for any schoolism class um, you know sus subscribing for a year or two years you get the price of uh, fifteen dollars a month now if you subscribe to Kickstarter right now you're actually gonna get a much better price of ten dollars a month if you pledge for the one year or two year and that's why it's not just gonna be beneficial for everybody if we all kinda pull in to pledge for this Kickstarter but it's also gonna help you tremendously because you're gonna be saving a heck of a lot um, you know in your art education okay so somebody's asking yes does that mean that you're going to that the new subscriptions will be uh, $15 a month yes if you don't pledge for the Kickstarter then right now as it stands it's going to be $15 a month if you pledge for a year or two year package now if you pledge for the Kickstarter though It'll be ten dollars a month. But anyways, let's talk about some really cool stuff right now. Why don't you come and join me and draw with me? Because you know what? As I'm doing these streams, as I'm doing these exercises, I have to be serious. I have to be committed. Why? Because I'm doing these streams, and I know that people are um, looking forward to these streams, looking forward to exercises, and that makes me committed. Now, if you stay that's the same kind of committed as me, or even more so, because my schedules tend to be really, really crazy, uh, not as much free time, but if you do have a bunch of free time, and you do do these, these exercises, these drawing exercises consistently, you're going to see huge improvements. It's awesome. I've recently been looking at uh, Twitter, you know, and searching for the hashtag ChewStream. So when you do these exercises, hashtag it ChewStream, and then we can all see each other's improvement. Okay? And so I've been doing that and just seeing tremendous improvement among so many people. And uh, hopefully, if I remember next time, I'm, gonna, I'm going to show a bunch of those um those exercises that people have been doing so even more reason to do the exercises post your stuff because I'm gonna be choosing a bunch of my favorites to post on the next stream okay now if you are new to the stream let me uh, let me just start off by just welcoming you here and the other thing is, uh, we usually like to start off the stream with a bunch of shoutouts. You know, I see that Megan has already um, let me know where she's from. Megan from St. Louis, how's it going? Good to see you. 
somebody's asking you know about Wacom tablets you don't need a Wacom tablet for every schoolism class there's plenty of classes like character design um, you know the art of character stuff like that where you can use just pencil and paper okay so Dallas Texas Germany Mexico Denmark Croatia Philippines Curacao Brazil Denmark Philippines Manitoba Italy Russia Rome, Israel, Russia, Texas, right on, right on. Welcome, everybody. And, uh, you know, if you can, again, I'd just like to say, why don't you just uh, come and draw with me? Because staying artistically fit, that's the name of the game. That's what I'm trying to promote here. Just like back in the day, 10 years ago, we were doing this anyways, and we were doing this Oh, Venezuela, Colombia, Bulgaria, Portugal, what's up? Right on. Ten years ago, I was starting this uh, with Kay Asadera, the talented, beautiful Kay Asadera, and we started the Subway Sketch Group, right? And we would just teach people, welcome everybody to come for free and teach them on the subways of Toronto while we draw, while we drew everybody that came onto our uh, train. You know, why did we do this every week? We just did this last week. We just did this the week before. Why? Because I know, or we knew, that if we stay consistent with our exercises, then we're going to be so artistically fit, and we're going to see the improvements in our art most dramatically, just doing this consistently, a little bit every, well, back in those days is every week and we would go for like a few hours what I'm saying here is if you can here is the challenge to do one of these things every day one hour of just passionate just learning concentration trying to visualize what it is that you want to paint what you want to see on screen before you actually paint it down Yeah, and big shouts out to everybody that is attending the stream for the first time today. I see a bunch of uh, first timers. Welcome. Feel free to ask some questions, things like that. That's another big part of what this stream is for. Um, you know, when I was in school, I didn't know any professionals. I didn't know how it was like working on films, you know, for big budget movies like the big studios, the stuff that I wanted to do. And unfortunately, at that time, um, none of my teachers really knew that as well. So how do you get to, you know, the big jobs? Well, you got to learn from the people that are doing those big jobs. And, uh, you know, I know I'm very lucky. I've, I've been very lucky to have the wonderful uh, people around me that I've uh, been able to cross paths with and them teaching me and working on amazing projects and working with you know, directors like Tim Burton and things like that. I've been very, very fortunate to learn a lot of this stuff from those kind of people. And so that's part of the stream too, is just to be able to kind of open up dialogue so that any of you that are interested in you know, working on movies or games or things like that, you can ask me questions. And I'll give you my answer. I'll give you what helped me. You know, many times that is a very effective answer, but at, at the same time, keep our minds open. Okay, that what my answer is, is just my answer, what worked for me. And uh, that doesn't mean that it's the be-all, end-all of all answers. We have to keep our minds open. That's how we get to uh, evolution, right? And the whole entire industry keeps evolving. So to keep up with it, we must keep evolving with it. And to lead the pack we ourselves need to be the ones to evolve the industries that we're in. 
you know, I don't care to be the best. I'm not competitive um, very much at all. You know, I just care to be better than I was constantly. And if you can follow that rule, you're going to do just fine. Okay, so let's go, right? Let's do this. If you haven't started painting yet, come paint with me. You can see the link uh, below the video. And if you are watching this on YouTube, then you'd see a link right there um, you know, to download the pic, and you can paint along with me. Okay, so the other thing is when you ask a question to help me out, type in the words question in capital letters before you actually type in your question. Okay, that way I'll be able to see your question a lot easier through the chat. Um, it's doing a lot of different things. You know, when you're doing these streams, your attention's going all over the place, so, uh, and sometimes the chat gets really crazy. Okay. Um, let's go to. Okay, I'm just copying a bunch of questions down. But let's go to the very first uh, question here, which is Do you think it would be best to print your files to paint on top of them? I usually try to copy the base on each head I do. You can totally, that's a great question, you can totally take these files, print them out, draw on top of them, paint on top of them. Um, absolutely, because you see, the whole entire point of all of these drawing exercises, what they all revolve around is the ability to visualize. Why? Because that is the most powerful way to think. If you kind of look at when you're looking at a you know, uh, a cup, and you're thinking in terms of value, what do you do? You're thinking, how dark is that value compared to the value that I'm drawing, compared to all the other things that in my drawing, you know, how dark should that value be? That's one way of thinking. Another way of thinking could be you see somebody leaning against a post and you're going, what angle is that person leaning at? You know, and you try to match the same angle. That's another way of thinking. But visualizing encompasses all of these things, you see, because if you can visualize that angle before you actually draw it down, then you can adjust it as well if you're really good at visualizing. And then if you adjust it to the right point, you can see it in your mind's eye. You haven't drawn it down. You have a nice clean piece of paper still. You know, you can draw down that line. Um, same thing with tone. Same thing with all sorts of stuff. When you can visualize it better and better, hopefully to the point where, you know, 70% of it's done already, 80% or higher, all of a sudden you're painting paintings in, you know, just a few seconds just because you're painting it in your mind's eye first. And you could go through so many different versions of this before you get to your final version. Right now I'm working on a film where I'm doing that constantly. Yeah, I'm looking at um, I'm looking at these characters, and these characters are well. I can't get into too much detail, but the characters are specific. The description is specific, and I would kind of go through a rolodex of these images in my mind different designs and start manipulating them in my mind and just trying to visualize them until I hit the right one and then I'll start drawing it down. You know, it's saved me so much time and I know that it'll save you guys a lot of time as well because that's a very common thing that everybody has. Anyways, so these templates here, these, you know, working files here are really great because they don't dictate your style. They don't dictate even what you're going to draw half the time. It's just a base. It's just some, what I relate it to are when you're learning to ride a bicycle, 
right? When you're learning to ride a bicycle, most people will learn with training wheels first, right? It, it's like the underlining structure of your head, and it helps you stay balanced. And then as we progress, we start slowly taking off those training wheels. And if you are painting along with me, you can see that the other two faces there, they get less and less details, less and less structure around them to hold you up. So when you get to those heads, you'll have to depend more on yourself and your, more on your own skills, your own visualizing skills of structure, of you know the base structures and all that but you know what you just went through if you go along with me you just went through the very first head and that one is has a great you know structural base and so as you paint over it you can start to feel the structure and it's almost it almost becomes like muscle memory when you go to the next one there is no head there there's only ears uh, eyes and uh, and a mouth right so let's go to the next question here okay next question here is when schoolism subscriptions begins uh, is it possible to choose to be taught by one of the teachers and it will be cheaper to buy one of their nine-week uh, courses. So, what this person is talking about is we have we have the subscriptions that we're rolling out, right? But we also have the premium, premium version for the people that really just want the best of the best. And the premium, premium version is the full version, which is you do the assignments, you watch the lessons, you go through the curriculum, and whenever you hand in something then your teacher is going to be drawing over top of your stuff talking to you specifically and giving you specifically your own you know feedback which when it's customized towards your specific you know uh, strengths and weaknesses then that's when we the teachers can get you over hurdles of uh, obstacles in, in your drawing or your painting in just a matter of minutes we can explain that to you when if you're doing that by yourself you might go through weeks without actually figuring it out but when you see somebody drawing over top of your stuff things click just way way better unfortunately we're not you know those ones are gonna stay the same those are generally around a thousand dollars each and that's because these teachers you know they already get paid well working on film and move you know games and whatever it might be um, and for me you know my teachers on schoolism are extremely important to me and I want to make sure that they get you know what they deserve okay so since most of the money goes to them anyways um, we're not lowering the premium versions, the full versions of uh, the schoolism classes. Let's go to, you know, but on that note, I know a lot of people would like to take those classes, obviously, um, you know, like when I see those feedback videos with Dice Tsutsumi and Robert Kondo, they were both art directors for Toy Story 3 and um, you know, the art director on Ratatouille for Robert Kondo, and they both worked on Monsters uh, University together and all this, all that. When you have people like that painting on top of your stuff, it's an, it's an incredible growing experience. Um, if you ask any of the students that took his, their course, the full course, wow. So, anyways, the main thing was that that was working very well, and it's always been working really well. Classes always fill, and there's always a really healthy demand. But we wanted to service 
the other people as well, the people that couldn't afford those full classes. And that's why we're doing the subscription, so that if you can't afford you know, $1,000 classes, you can afford like $10 a month, right? Hopefully. And uh, if you can afford that, then you can take the subscription version on Kickstarter. You know, or if you'd like to wait, then you're just going to pay a bit more. Um, right now, it looks like $15 a month. Anyhow, let's go on to the next question. So the next question is, hey, I noticed you're painting in Photoshop this time. Uh, what brush are you using? Is it similar to the one that you're using in Sketchbook? Uh, the brush that I'm using, that's a great question because I see a lot of people asking, what brush is that on YouTube, right? So the brush that I'm using, it's not always the same brush that I'm using, but in this case, it definitely is because everybody has this brush in Photoshop. It is the default brush. This is just the circle brush. That's it. The thing is, is that I use the circle brush um, quite I think in a pretty different way. So it has shape dynamics on it. Okay, it has shape dynamics on it, and it has. Um, I manipulate the flow quite a lot. I use flow pretty low. That way, I can get many different values with the same uh, tone. And that's why you can see that I'm blending in things pretty easily here. It's a great way for sketching. I like it. Okay, so next question is, um, next question says, what courses will be useful to get into the gaming industry? Depends what you want to do. Okay, so uh, Nathan Fawkes, he has three courses. One on composition, which is amazing. They're all amazing. The other one on designing environments, and the last one is... Uh, designing with color and light. Now, you know he's worked for Blizzard, so those are great, really great courses uh, that he's even taught people at Blizzard. Um, you know his philosophies on location design and environment and and composition and so on and so forth. Um, so those ones are great if you're interested in locations. If you're interested in character design, then there's, of course, there's character design with Steven Silver. There's uh, character design with Daniel Ariega. If you're interested in um, more of a cartoonier look. Okay, I design creatures. I have a course called Painting Creatures with Bobby Chu. Uh, that one is great as well if uh, if that's what you're interested in you know gaming film it's quite similar it's very much like there's the high end there's the low end and you know low budget games high budget games low budget films high budget films and they all revolve around the same kind of stuff you know visualizing uh, a story for the director, for the people watching, for whoever, your art director, things like that. Okay, let's go to the next question here, which is, I think I'm good with anatomy now, but I always had trouble designing characters. Which schoolism class should I take to work better with my drawing process? And if you have any tips. Well, these videos are for free. But if you want even more help, um, definitely Steven Silver's character design class, he has two of them. Those are both fantastic. Um, the one that Daniel teaches is very specific towards uh, film, animated films. But Steven Silver's class, it has a lot of amazing, amazing fundamentals, which I use even though our styles are completely different, I still, you know, I learned many of my 
philosophies and techniques of character design from actually from Steven Silver's class, even though uh, most people know me from my work in live action films like Alice in Wonderland or Men in Black 3. There's still much of it that pertains to live action. It's very fundamental. That's why it's called The Fundamentals of Character Design with Steven Silver. Okay, so let's go to the next question here, which is, let me just uh, write down something real quick. Next question here is, um, if you were learning from books, how would you go about learning from them? For example, Vilpu or Bridgman. You know, books are great. How would I learn from them? I'd probably copy them. You know, I have copied them, copied, and try to understand what do they draw first? What do they draw second? Try to de dissect it almost like how did they do this and what were they thinking when they were doing this but how much does a book cost you see that's why I wouldn't study from books you know nowadays I would go to videos from well-known successful artists that I really really respect because when you you know, for example, that's the whole entire point behind the, you know, schoolism subscription, especially the Kickstarter. You're paying $10 a month for a year or two years. That's like half a book a month. And you can learn from so many different courses. So I would actually do that instead. Honestly, even if I wasn't running schoolism, that is the whole entire reason why I built schoolism. You know, and the whole entire reason why we're doing the subscription thing because we want it to be even cheaper than books, even cheaper than you know, or comparable to a dinner at Denny's or something. You know, we want it to be so cheap that you don't have to worry about saving up, that you don't have to worry about um, taking out a loan. Hopefully, right? That's what we're hoping. Of course, perhaps some people in third world countries might need to take out a small loan, $120 for a whole entire year, that kind of thing. But at least now they have that option. So we're really trying to, I'm really trying to, you know, just do something positive for people out there in the world. Because um, when I think about those artists that don't have access to the really, really professional, great, top level knowledge, you know, their potential could be amazing through the roof. But because they can't access that knowledge, it's like trying to paint the Mona Lisa, you know, with uh, the knowledge of a caveman. You know, a caveman might be super, super smart, have an IQ, like, genius level, but if they are not building on top of other people's great knowledge, how far can you actually go? not sure right probably not nearly as far is as if you did have access to uh, schools and videos from you know really great artists before us I take schools and videos or schools and classes Okay, so let's go on to the next question. Marcelo Vignali was supposed to do a visual development course on schoolism way back in the day. What happened there, and is there any chance of this happening again in the future? I'm a very patient person. Marcelo Vignali is a teacher, an artist, a production designer, art director uh, that I highly respect, especially because the man can paint and draw. He can do everything so well and can teach very well I'm a very patient person you know I keep poking at him every once in a while asking him about it so hopefully in time he will do a course and when he does do that course I'm sure it's gonna be amazing okay let's go on to the next question here
Um, next question here is, uh, do you have any suggestions for networking? If I'm starting to continue my art education with online classes like schoolism rather than in-person classes. I hope that's not too off topic. That's totally not off topic and that's totally a, a course that they should teach in school because really when it comes down to it, when you think about the jobs that are available out there, you know, just about 99.9% .9 of them, you have to deal with people. How come there's no courses in school that are mandatory for people to learn how to deal with other people? as I go through my own career, you know, now into past my 10th year, slightly past my 10th year of just having my own studio, and then before that working, you know, from a teenager all the way into college designing toys um, back then. I don't do that anymore. But, uh, you know, going through all of that, you really learn and you really um, value people that can work well with other people, network well, talk with people well. So networking tips. I'd say the very first one is the biggest one that I can tell you, the most important one I can tell you is one that I didn't do on purpose but I did it anyways which is don't be in a rush. Don't be in a rush to make things happen with that first meeting. You know, you only do that if it's dire need, like you have no other, this is your only chance ever, 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 ever to meet this person than maybe. But of course, that's gonna, it's gonna be harder. What has helped me all these years is the fact that um, I don't, you know, I, I'm more interested in them than I am in telling them about myself. And that's been really, really helpful. I didn't even think about it. It's only in hindsight, looking back, seeing that, yeah, that really, really helped. I never wanted anything from people a lot of times. I would rather just help them. I would help them and try to help people a lot more than want things from them. Why? Because I just I think it goes into just my nature of wanting to teach people or whatever. I instinctively it's just like I want to help people. You know, why not? It actually makes you feel really good when you help somebody. So if you reach out to people, you know, you're networking, you're reaching out to people, try to find a way that you can help them. That's a wonderful way to network. These are so simple, but, um, and they make so much sense, but nobody really kind of tells us that. I know nobody really told me that in school. And the other thing is the whole entire idea of slow playing everything. Like you're not trying to get anything from anybody. You're trying to help people. And guess what happens when you're constantly trying to help people? Picture somebody constantly trying to help you. They're very genuinely trying to help you. What do you think you're going to do to that, to that person? you're going to eventually want to try to help them. That's the natural reaction that we have. Right? And it's only now, years, years, years later, where I can look back and go, yeah, I did this with that person, this project with that person, but before that, years ago, I helped this person. You know, even now, now it's a lot more interesting because, you know, I've been, Imaginism, Studio, Schoolism has been around for 10 years. I've been able to help a lot of people. And now people are coming back just going, okay, well now they're in a position to help me. Maybe they're an art director at some awesome studio or even a director, who knows? You know, or putting in a good word because I'm trying to meet a certain somebody. You know, I didn't help them in the beginning because I was thinking that I'd get something from them afterwards. It's more like 
make that a habit, I guarantee you it's going to come back to you, you know, just constantly. It's going to constantly come back to you. Just make it a habit. Don't think of it as, oh, I'm helping you now, so now that person owes me. Never think about it like that. Just think about it as that's the kind of person you want to be. And if you do that, then you'll be great at networking. Okay. Uh, let's go to the next question here, which is... I love joining you guys to draw. Great. Do you find it more useful to keep your mind thinking about how to visualize, or is it more like an unconscious act? It can be a very unconscious act, but definitely try to concentrate on it, because that's when you're really pushing those muscles. Okay, so let me give you an example. So say you're at the gym, okay? And there's actually been experiments of this. When you're at the gym and you're just jogging, okay, and you're watching the TV, and you're concentrating on the show on the TV, and you're just jogging without actually trying to think about jogging and using those muscles, there's scientific you know, experiments, proof that that isn't as effective as if you are jogging and you are visualizing all of your muscles working hard, pushing to propel you forward and all that stuff. If you are concentrating like that, then your muscles will grow much faster. Same thing with visualizing. When you are really concentrating and trying to visualize things better and better, Visualizing is the hardest way to, to think. So you might not feel the improvement until you do this consistently for a while. But many of you will, okay? You will feel the improvement. You got to push yourself. You got to consciously think about it. Okay, and you can see that the painting that I'm doing here, it starts off quite light. It's not the only way to paint, but I generally, I like this way of painting because when you're painting light, it's easier to visualize the things that aren't there, that you might want to put in there. Okay, if those were very harsh details there, it would be much harder for me to visualize um, details that aren't there, just because of the sheer contrast of things. Right, contrast just kind of takes over takes over your visualizing abilities or hinders them a bit because you picture it like this you are you're a tribe tribal you know hunter in the jungle right you see a little rustling in the in the bushes and you see a little tail you got to visualize the rest of it because you don't have the information right so you're looking at the rustling the sounds the tail and you're thinking is that a puma that I need to run away from or is that a you know some sort of animal that I can kill and eat if you were if you were given all the information that you needed you could see the head you could see the whole body you wouldn't need to visualize anything so I feel like our human nature our, how we've evolved is that with less information we're able to visualize better why do you think when it's late at night, you know, you look over in the corner, you just kind of glance, you think you see somebody sitting in the corner. But then you look again, and it's actually just a chair with a baseball bat and a, you know, a hat on the chair in some awkward way. Where it made you think that there was a person there. How come those kind of things happen way more at night than it does during the day? Because at night, you don't have a lot of information you don't have a lot of clear information which makes you be able to visualize things even clearer. Well, same thing goes with painting. We all have this natural ability to visualize better when we don't have a lot of contrast to deal with. 
And so when I'm painting lightly, it actually helps me a lot to visualize the things that I want to see there. Okay, let's go to the next question. Next question goes, uh, does the Kickstarter project, is it going to uh, help in any way with the feedback video classes? The This is a question I answered previous. Uh, the full classes with the one-on-one, -on -one, the, you know, customized feedback videos for your assignments and everything, those won't change. Okay, but the subscriptions is going to give everybody much more opportunity to learn um, and watch all these great lessons from all these great teachers uh, on schoolism. Okay, the next question here let's go to the next one, hold on one second The next question here is, um, will it be possible to see the lessons on smartphone or iPad? We're working on that. Okay, we're working on that. Um, right now, no. Okay, next question is, I like this question, when do you guys plan to come to Brazil for a live workshop? Love Brazil, miss Brazil, we want to go back, definitely working on it. Right now, um, you know, Brazil, it's definitely tougher because everybody in North America needs to get a visa to enter Brazil and all this stuff. So, and it's an extremely long flight from California to, you know, a place like Sao Paulo. Um, so, we're working on it. Not sure when. But speaking of... Um, Speaking of workshops, Berlin, Berlin workshop, it's happening, it's coming, May 30th, 31st, it's going to be with Paul Lezane, the incredible paintings of Paul Lezane, he's going to be teaching three killer painting techniques, and then after that it's going to be Marcelo Vignali, he's going to be teaching, uh, Fractal figure drawing. This is his method, his way of drawing the figures that helps designers and people that like to draw. It will help you with your design sense. Uh, and of course, the man, he's an incredible artist, so it's just an honor just to see him draw live. And then you have Steven Silver. Steven Silver, he is legendary character designer one of my best buddies he's going to be teaching in Berlin as well and there is no London workshop this year okay we had some problems with the uh, venue space in London so this year there's no London workshop so go to the Berlin one if uh, if you can it's going to be awesome. Okay, next question here is uh, There comes a time when you think you cannot improve. How do you keep improving? How to make yourself or how to self evaluate? Okay, you're probably just doing the same stuff too much and you need to branch out. You need to start, let's take a moment and just think about, okay, what thing can you learn that will open up more opportunities for you, opportunities for things that you would love to do, okay? What would that be? The things that we know that are important and aren't urgent for us to do, those are the things that will evolve your life in so many ways. Those are the things that you should do constantly. You should try to constantly live in that part of your tasks where it's doing things that you don't have to do but are important. 
and will open up new doors. If you're constantly doing the things that you need to do, they're urgent and important, those are generally those are things that will help you maintain your life. Just maintain it. It won't really excel it very easily. That's something I totally live by. And that's helped me in so many ways. So for example, do I need to teach? No, I, you know, I could just work on my own stuff. But it was important to me to start doing workshops. It was important to me to do all these things. And that's helped me in so many ways. It's actually helped me get more jobs because, because I'm teaching. You know, and people figure if you're teaching well and people like your teaching, then most likely you're good at what you do. Maybe it's ZBrush. I've used this uh, example in the past. Maybe you're a painter and you think, if I learn ZBrush, then I can paint over top of my ZBrush stuff. Or it'll help me open up doors to jobs where I'm not just designing things by drawing them, but I'm actually sculpting them as well. Who knows? Right? Those are all little roads towards evolution in your, and improvement in your stuff. Another great, uh, really great way of just keeping things going, evolving your your skills, improving them constantly, is just to pick a topic and start learning the heck out of it. You know, micro photography. How does that all work? Why do we see the things that we do there? And you start gaining those bits of knowledge. You might not be gaining new painting knowledge, but you'll be gaining new life knowledge, which will be incorporated into your paintings and helping your paintings improve, giving it a whole nother level in case people are interested in, or if you have a project that you know coincides with the whole entire idea of microphotography, for example. Um, let's go on to the next question here. If I get the professional Kickstarter subscription, will the teachers draw over your work? No. Um, you need the full classes for that. Next question is, what are you drinking? So I guess I was drinking something, which is my coffee. It's the morning. I actually, I was up around 3 this morning. It was very difficult to get up. So, yeah got my coffee next question is um, I don't have Photoshop or sketchbook pro I only have uh, clip studio paint and studio and paint studio SAI would that be a problem for the coloring and painting courses um, definitely email info at schoolism com and tell them the specific course that you're looking for or you can ask them that question and they can give you a list of the courses that would be fine without Photoshop or Sketchbook Pro because um, there's a bunch you know definitely Daisatsumi, Robert Kondo's class that you can do without Sketch or Photoshop even though they do give you some pretty cool little uh, tips um, about Photoshop as well most of the course is very much based on uh, learning to see, learning to uh, understand color and light and how we see life, the world. Okay, next question is, is it better to focus on one of your drawing exercises, doing it over and over for a week? or more then moving on to another exercise or to do them in rotation a different one each day great question um, it really depends on you your own skill level and what it is you would like to do to make it um, an experience that's going to be enjoyable 
So if you don't like the repetitive stuff, definitely don't keep repeating uh, exercises. If you are, you know, okay with repetitive stuff, then totally, I would say, do the same exercise every day for a week. And you're going to no notice dramatic improvements, I guarantee you, dramatic improvements, um, as long as you're concentrating hard on the ability to visualize. Okay, one thing that I definitely want to mention is that don't use any reference. At least if you are going to use reference, um, don't start off using reference. Do an hour of no reference or actually you know what the order of it doesn't really matter if you want to start off with reference and then throw it away and then just paint or draw then that's fine too you know my preference is I like to start off with no reference at all um, so to answer your question if you're gonna use reference just make sure that somewhere down the line during that same sitting or whatever that you are not using reference okay and you force yourself to just use the knowledge in your head to create something. Sometimes it won't look good. You know, the last stream that I did, I really didn't like the last character that I did. I thought it kind of stunk. Sometimes it won't look good. But it's not about drawing pretty pictures here. It's about lifting those artistic weights to keep yourself artistically fit. That's what it's about. Okay, so yeah, somebody's saying that they used the paint tool Psy for uh, Silver's class, and that worked fine. Um, so let's go on to the next question here. That was a great question, by the way, the drawing exercises one. If you've never been a stellar draftsman, can you help it with? attitude or work even harder at realistic draft, draftsmanship. This will actually help you with draftsmanship as well because you're starting off with great structure. Then you're moving on to having to create your own structure. Right? That is going to help with your draftsmanship because draftsmanship the underpinning thing about that is that you have to have great structure. Great structure is a huge part about these drawing exercises. And these drawing exercises, they're free. I don't want you to think that every free thing is not valuable. Google is extremely valuable. You know, it's one of the most uh, one of the biggest, you know, most uh, profitable companies in the world. And most of their products are free. This is free because I believe in what I'm doing here. I'm trying to give people options so that even if you can't afford $10 a month for your Kickstarter, this is for you guys. Or for the Schoolism Kickstarter, if you can't afford that, that shouldn't matter either. So this is option C, which actually goes great with, you know, a full schoolism class or just watching it self-start, self-taught. This is a great one just to constantly be artistically fit. You know, this is like going to the gym for artists. Do it regularly. And the best thing of all is that it is it's free and I put a lot of effort into it at the same time okay let's go on to the next question here which is um, I'm currently drawing characters for a living but I want to get into concept art how do I manage financially uh, in the beginning when I don't have a lot of jobs how did you manage okay so it sounds to me like right now you have a certain kind of life and you want to turn that into a different kind of life career-wise Whenever you want to change your career or your life dramatically from one thing to another, 
it's going to take a huge amount of energy, a huge amount of passion and energy and just chutzpah to, right in the beginning to get you over that hump and to make that transition. Mentally prepare for this. Nobody, it's much harder and it'll be much slower to make a gradual transition. Right? It could take you years and years and years and years. And who wants to do that? When you can take much less time to get into concept art. So the way to do that is you just got to get mentally prepared and expect to do a lot more hours. If you want to maintain the jobs that you already have, the life that you already have, you got to maintain those same hours doing those same things. And then as you're making this transition into concept art, you got to add hours now to doing concept art. Now, if you don't have the hours, then what you need to do is just get faster with your characters, faster with everything in your life, and then you know allocate some of that time towards uh, concept art. You know, we all have the same amount of minutes in a day. It's how we spend them that's going to make the difference. Okay, let's go on to the next question. Next question is, um, I have an interest in cartoon animations. Can I take any course from that? Um, to animate, I think one that will definitely help it's not going to teach you how to animate but it'll definitely help tremendously is the gesture drawing class the gesture drawing class with Alex Wu or Luis Gonzalez they both are not just uh, artists at Pixar but they also teach the gesture drawing class at Pixar for the people at Pixar that's going straight to the top you know, and learning straight from the top. And that for sure would help anybody doing anything involving characters. Okay. So let's go on to the next question now. And the next question is... Are you planning to make similar a similar exercise just for focusing on eyes or what's the good method to study that alone um, that's definitely actually on my list of the different exercises that I'm going to be doing um, but you can do that as well just by studying different eyes painting different eyes thinking about what makes them look like eyes um, perhaps create your own little template of different eyes and then just start painting away okay so that's pretty much it um, for the questions today there's just a couple things I want to you know, that I jotted down that I wanted to uh, mention okay some real kind of gems that I found that have really helped me Okay, one is don't be competitive. Just be competitive with yourself. Always see what everybody else is doing, but only be competitive with yourself. Don't care to be the best. Just care to be better than you were constantly. Okay, the other thing that I wrote down here was as I was thinking about the last stream and how that totally crapped out and the connection was really bad. Good follows the bad for those that keep going. When something bad happens to you and you're trying your hardest and you're using common sense, it just means if you keep going with a positive attitude, guess what? Great things are on their way. Um, final thought, okay? You slow down your dreams with every opportunity that isn't taken. This one's important because, you know, we only have a certain amount of time on this world, in, on this planet. 
you got to make the best of it. And a lot of times, we know what we're supposed to do. We know what we need to do to get fit. Or we know what we need to do to get better at art. We know what we should be doing as we're playing Dota or whatever video game is totally taking over your life. We know at that time what we could do to make our careers better. Your dreams slow down whenever you don't take those opportunities. So if you know what you need to do to get to that better future, that better life, I urge you to do it. Because too many of us know exactly what we need to do to get to that next level, but we don't do it. You know, people that achieve great things don't look for the easiest way to do it. They look for the right way. You know, they don't look for the easiest way to waste their time. They look for the proper thing that they should be doing with their time. And as you go through these struggles and challenges, because if you're doing the right thing, you will for sure be doing going through struggles and challenges. When you go through big struggles and challenges, concentrate on how great it'll feel when you succeeded, when you've succeeded. You know, especially through those tough times. Because guess what? When you are actually going through those tough times, those will be some of your fondest memories when you become successful. I guarantee it. Okay, those things will pass as long as you're trying super hard and you're using your common sense. Okay, and the last final thought I wanted to leave you guys with is that, you know, I was talking about games a little bit. I used to be into video games, but now I know what is my absolute favorite video game in the world which is life try to think of life as a game always trying to get to that next level you know there's no game better because when you start winning in this game your whole life changes right not just your little character on screen gets upgraded you get upgraded your life gets upgraded and how cool is that by thinking about things this way, I've been able to travel the world. I've been able to work on the most amazing projects, working with the most amazing artists. It's not because I was born talented. I was very much not born as talented as many. It's just because... You know, it's hard work, dedication, thinking about life as a game, trying to get to that next level. And I know you can do it too. I don't even know you, but I know you can do it too. Why? Because this is a thing, art is a thing, where you don't need big muscles. You don't need to have a six foot six frame. All you need to do is be able to see and move a brush around, move a pencil around. It's up to you. Okay? So, stay hungry, stay concentrated, keep going. I'll see you the next time on the Chew Stream. I hope you have a wonderful, amazing day, amazing weekend. And, uh, that's it. So, thank you very much for tuning in. And I'll see you guys next time.